Taliban swept across almost all of Afghanistan in a matter of weeks, but one region has managed to hold out. Panjshir Valley, just about an hour north of Kabul, managed to fend off the Soviets in the 1980s and then in later years, the Taliban. And in recent weeks, its fighters have reportedly repelled multiple Taliban attacks. Its forces are known as the National Resistance Front of Afghanistan, the NRF, and are led by a young British university graduate trained by the British Army. Filmmaker and former Royal Marine Commando James Glancy met the group's director, Ahmed Mossad, as he filmed a documentary covering the Afghan war, the Mujahideen, and everyday Afghan lives. And he joins us now. James, thanks so much for joining us on Quick Take Charge. Tell us more about Ahmed Mossad, the, the leader of the NRF. Who is he? So Massoud is the son of the great Commander Massoud. He is one of the Mujahideen leaders that was backed by Britain, backed by the CIA in the Afghan war against the Soviet Union. And he was able to command alongside um, many other Mujahideen commanders. He was able to, to repel 13 assaults by Soviet um, battalions, Soviet brigades that went up the Panjshir Valley. And because of that, he gained this fearsome reputation as a guerrilla military commander. He was also very eloquent, um, educated, um, partially in France, in Paris, um, a great orator and a great leader. He was killed in 2001 by Al Qaeda just before 9 11. And they say if he hadn't been killed, 9 11 wouldn't have happened. He's the arch enemy of the Taliban because he fought them after the Soviet invasion. He fought against the Taliban. And the Panjshir and that area of Afghanistan has never been conquered by the Russians or by the Taliban. So this is his son, Ahmed Massoud, who is now 32 years old. He was 12 when. Um, the great Masood, his father, was killed by Al-Qaeda. And now he's back in the Panjshir with the old Mujahideen commanders, alongside many former members of the Afghan National Army, the Afghan Special Forces, ready to uh, counter the Taliban. They're leading what's called the resistance. They've got their own national flag. And they've also, alongside them, got Vice President Amrullah Saleh. He's a, the Vice President of Afghanistan. He's also a Tajik from the Panjshir. So they've got a, a really capable collection of military commanders, of former, of, of diplomatic political personnel from the um, former regime that's just fallen. And they, are, they have um, bolstered their defenses in the Panjshir, and they're ready and waiting for a, another assault and attack you, by the Taliban. James, do you think they can hold off the Taliban again 20 years later? At the moment, yes. I mean, they, they, they have between 6,000 to 10,000 well-trained, well-motivated troops. They, the, the commanders know the ground. Um, they even got helicopters. Um, they've got a lot of ammunition. They've got a lot of um, weapons there. They know what they're doing. That, you know, think of uh, the Panjshir like Helm's Deep from the Lord of the Rings. It's, incredibly, um, it's, a, it's an incredible defensive position. You're going into the Valley of Death when you go up there. And the Taliban have a very difficult time dislodging them. However, as you can see from the map here, the Panjshir is surrounded. So they're not getting any more food, fuel, or supplies. And that's the big problem. They can hold out for a few months, but they're not going to be able to hold out over years without either smashing a corridor to the north, to Tajikistan, or getting air support in the form of humanitarian supplies and food from the international community, which would have to be parachuted in or brought by helicopter. Well, to what extent does the international community have in its best interest to help this group? Well, it's absolutely in the international community's interest to help them because they're the last people holding out um, for freedom, for an in inclusive Afghanistan where all ethnicities, such as Hazaras, Tajiks, Uzbeks, and Pashtuns can be safe. Their ideals are very similar to ours, but they're also anti-Al-Qaeda, they're anti-ISIS, they're anti-all the extremists. These are our allies. We, we owe it to them to support them. But um, be beyond that, what can, what can be done? Well, at the moment, Britain and America aren't thinking about phase two, what happens when we withdraw from Afghanistan, because everybody's focusing on this evacuation and the utter chaos from the scenes that we've been seeing in Kabul. But at some point, we're all going to have to think, are, is, is the West going to turn its back on Afghanistan, or is it going to do a dirty deal with the Taliban, who we know we can't trust, who we know are linked with Al-Qaeda, the Haqqani network are linked with all sorts of extremist organizations from, the, from around the world, or are we going to support these freedom fighters in the Panjshir Valley? So, James, let's 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 talk a little bit more about what is happening on the ground right right now, because you're a former Royal Marine commando who spent time there. Uh, 
as, as a commando and also, of course, as a filmmaker more recently, getting a, an understanding of the lives of many of these Afghans we're speaking about, I'm, I'm wondering if you can talk more about the links between the Taliban and ISIS-K and ISIS, because uh, you argue that they're not necessarily as distinct as many people are characterizing right now. I mean, ISIS is a, is a sort of, the ISIS-K is like a franchise, uh, and they've been strong in Nangarhar and outside Jalalabad. And, and it's true to say um, British and American forces did do deals with the Taliban to fight ISIS a few years ago in eastern Afghanistan. You've got to remember those a lot of those ISIS fighters are Afghans themselves, just more, more extremist Afghans. And there are reported but very well documented links between the Haqqani network. The Haqqani network are Taliban, um, supported by Pakistan, the Pakistani ISI, who, by the way, the Pakistan ISI has infiltrated ISI, um, ISIS, K, um, so they do know what's going on as well. But this Haqqani network, they're the ones that originally used the suicide tactics against civilian targets in Afghanistan. So it's not that clear whether it's Haqqani network or ISIS, and I suspect that elements of the Taliban Haqqani network would have known this attack was going to happen. They do communicate. The Taliban isn't just one organization. It's it's very disparate. It's made up of competing factions. But we in the West right. talk about it as the Taliban. And that, that that is the wrong way to look at this. Hey, James, based on your experience as a Royal Marines commander in the country and later as a filmmaker, was it a mistake for the United States to withdraw from Afghanistan? Is it a mistake? I think it's very obvious that um, we don't yet know how big ramifications reputationally this are for the US, but we, it is catastrophic. If you're in Taiwan right now, you wouldn't you wouldn't back on the Americans supporting um, them against a, a Chinese invasion. It's clearly strengthened um, other extremist groups across Africa who feel that um, that we they can beat this great superpower so from a from a leadership point of view this is hugely damaging to america on the ground it would it didn't cost much money to maintain two or three thousand troops a few um technical um experts to support the support the the, the equipment that the the afghan national army had and to keep some sort of stability to stop the taliban and al-qaeda taking over so of course it's a huge mistake and the ramifications for this are going to go on for at least the next decade how does the United States and the international community, how do they avoid some of the worst ramifications that you could see as a result of this withdrawal? I mean, uh, the analysts and people are going to be poring over that now. It's very difficult because th this is a far greater defeat than Vietnam. This is worse than Suez for Britain reput reputationally. We're going to see a proliferation of extremism in parts of Afghanistan. The Taliban isn't... Um, that doesn't have complete control over the country. So, you know, what, what we had pre 9-11, where you had terrorism festering in Afghanistan, I think it's far worse now because we've also armed them with some of the, the best military equipment that can be manufactured in America. They've got hundreds of thousands of assault rifles, thermal imaging equipment, secure communications. They've been well-trained. I mean, we, this is a seriously bad situation. And that's just not to mention, by the way, and no one seems to want to mention Pakistan who have sponsored the Taliban, who essentially are the Taliban, command the Taliban. Um, what about our relationship with them? Do we look at sanctioning them? How do we continue the relationship with Pakistan that, we, that America and Britain has had for so many years? Yeah, that, well, that certainly remains to be seen. James Glancy, former Royal Marines commander.